the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth the mercies of our lord being renewed upon us day by day and one more day being kept alive for the purpose of god in glorifying him to the maximum before we could start our discourse it is mandatory it is compulsory that we need to go back in the privacy of our priesthood to use rebound 1 john 19 confession of our sin so that with this 1 john 19 the thought or deed or word by which our manner we do sin which constantly grieves and squelches Lord God, the Holy Spirit who permanently indwells in us. We need to make sure that we will take responsibility for our sin and be filled with the Spirit, controlled by the Spirit, so that the soul which is there in us, which had a constant, long love affair with the old sin nature, after believing in the lord and savior jesus christ lord god the holy spirit comes as a new member got married by activating in you a human spirit so that this human spirit which has been activated in you have to be energized and to energize the human spirit it is necessary that lord god the holy spirit have to be teaching to the human spirit and in return this activated human spirit can control your soul in your consciousness your mentality your evolution in your emotion in your norms and standards so that the soul which has been which has been given to you the first one conscious you should be aware of our lord and savior jesus christ and his doctrine mentality thinking christ thinking the knowledge of christ thinking bible doctrine number 3 your evolution appreciate doctrine and live for doctrine love for doctrine and die for doctrine and your evolution constantly positive to learn to take to renovate and our norms and standards being changed as we go along in this race a day by day process of edification of the soul as we graduate enough as we come back enough as we learn enough in greater norms and standards the earlier things we may be talking like childish but as we grow up we go upon for perfection and we take upon the mature things so this spirit which has been activated in us by the power of lord god the holy spirit being energized when we are not grieving nor squelching nor lying to the lord god the holy spirit will definitely take the possession of your soul and this possession of your soul which has to be taken place have to be given back to lord god the holy spirit who is the right owner of this body sealed unto the day of redemption and what we are going to do if you are not going to give the absolute authority absolute status quo to this human spirit so that this human spirit being taught under the mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit through the power of indwelling permanency of lord god the holy spirit and this both can enrich and control your soul direct your soul and bring every thought into captivity for Christ so that as the driving mechanism represents the steering wheel which will control the four wheeler body the body now which you have been possessing of the human one will be controlled by the four wheeler mechanisms of the soul it is the soul which is going to control and drive you out so that your body will be made absolutely mature thoroughly perfect unto all good works your body will be po- pointed out to the consideration of the reality as such every facet of your cell though it has been indwelled by though it has been there with the old sin nature no longer having the sovereign power which has been lost 
it takes out, it gives you to the performance. That which is pleasable in the sight of Jehovah. Now, now we no longer belong to our own flesh. Therefore, Apostle Paul said to us, It is not me who lives, but Christ who lives in me. It has been constantly mandated to put on the new man, to live in the new man, to walk in the new man, to yield unto the new man. If it were not so, Apostle Paul nor any of the apostles would have mentioned about the importance of the inner man which has to be strengthened by might through the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And if this inner man is not been strengthened by might, by the knowledge of Bible doctrine, though the Lord has provided for us the joints and the marrow, the ligaments and the tendons to hold on one together, so that we can learn at least something by the synchronization of this physical body, we can learn the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the ministry of the pastor, teacher, the ministry of the church, in edifying the body of Christ, perfecting of the saints, making them capable for the ministry. And living this, what are we doing? We are also following sometimes the trends pertaining to the scrap attitude of Satan. The great revolt which Satan had, which Satan took, which Satan made against the principles of Bible doctrine, gone in pride, thinking that I will also be like the Most High God. What did, it, what did it ultimately attain? A permanency of the reality of eternal punishment. Then it doesn't get shamed. And now it knew, it's doomy sure. And now it knew that it is going to be permanent into the lake of fire. So Satan thinks, better for me to go this, to do this, to do that. And it wants to gather as many as people not to believe in Christ, thinking that why they have to have this opportunity to believe in Christ. Why they have to be made positionally superior than me. The two strategies of Satan. Number one, see that no one believes in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number two, by if at all, by mistake, if they believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, see that they will never come to know the knowledge of truth. So that this truth, what we are able to communicate, what we are able to tell, which has been entrusted to our hands, have to be thoroughly guarded, have to be thoroughly represented. Church is not a place of truth. It is a ground and pillar of truth where the people will come to learn knowledge, where the people will come to know their life, where the people will come to know their design, their plan, their purpose, so that what it has been they have been predestined, what it is they have been foreknown, and what is the confirmation to the image where they have been called. And what is the maximum glorification of Christ which they can attain when they go through these three adult stages of this unique spiritual life, followed by spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity? Neither of the one they are interested to look upon this. Neither of the one they are interested to consider upon this. But what it is they are ultimately interested? Where Satan drives them to gain the approbation of man. And that may vary as per the man demands. In their various denominational trends, which I call abominational trends, traditions of men, carrier of Satan, following the three arrogant skills, self-justification, self-arrogance, and self-absorption, self self-deceptions. No matter whatever, they may seem good, but ultimately it is not good in the sight of Jehovah, dear brethren. No matter whatever, they may think it is great, it is not at all great in the sight of our Lord. Therefore, we need to make sure that we are walking a holy walk. Therefore, we need to make sure that we are witnessing by our life, not by our lips. Lips is also there, but witnessing by our life has a major impact. And how can we really witness our life when we are walking contrary towards Christ? No. When Lord God, the Holy Spirit, thoroughly possesses your soul, controls your soul. Possession means control, to take in charge. He permanently indwells in you, but fellowship is temporary. Whenever you sin, you lose it. And this fellowship has to be corrected. And this fellowship has to be brought to notice. 
no matter what it is. This fellowship has to be made absolutely perfect whenever we are confession of our sins through rebound, through 1 John 1, 9. Without confession of our sin, we cannot have. Lord God the Father didn't spare his own son on the cross. How much more you and I have to be? Though we are sons of God, then too Lord loves us so that we can use rebound and make sure that we are walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit and yielding unto the fruit of the Spirit so that we can purchase the time since the days are evil, redeeming the time which might be quite essential for us to note. And that is what you and I have been called. You and I have been given this great opportunity to witness unto Christ. What a great privilege we can ask on this earth then to witness for our Lord. What a great work that you can ask unto the Lord apart from being for Him over here to reach maximum glorification for Christ over the positive of privileges bestowed upon us graciously in eternity past. What else can we ask to our Lord to enjoy on this earth? A good wife, a good marriage, a good job, a good money. What you can do with all these things without having capacity. You and I may talk in terms of making business, in terms of capital, which is money. But Lord talks in us in terms of the divine capital, which is nothing but the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith we can yield forth unto him greater work, greater business. We are here or temporarily on this earth for such a short time of span. In this short span of time, we need to show forth the true virtue of our Lord, the true glory of our Lord, and the true purpose of creating us, giving back an answer with a slipper to Satan, telling that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is absolutely great. Just not answering back. We answer back by taking a slipper and slapping upon his face. That is what you and I have to come. A conflict, an impact. In this conflict. But what are we doing? We are in return easily slapped around. We are in return easily be drowned around. Neither able to understand the importance of the ministry, nor able to understand the purpose of your survival on this earth. Just wasting your time in useless and worthless things, dear brethren, which is a great, great, great pathetic note to know. Therefore, dear brethren, it is a must that we need to strive for the mastery by making our body eligible, thoroughly made perfect, because it is binding for us to make merry in the Lord as an unprofitable slave. The one who has been dead has been found alive. How happy you would be. It would be great joy for us when you use rebound and get back into your supernatural means of execution to this great unique super spiritual life. This unique spiritual life in the protocol plan of God. This unique spiritual trend which has not been given in the past but has been made known for us now so that we can understand the polity of privileges. We can be the Alakane Ketesis. We can be the mystery which Lord has hid and kept for us in eternity past and how great we are now in this church age, though the 1500 years passed out by not giving the Bible in our hands by the Roman Catholic people, but in the Protestantism, when we got around, we got the Bible, the truth in our hands, erasing those upcoupling books which are not at all eligible, apocrypha books which are not at all eligible for us to look. And later on, what is happening till now? Though they had a fight for reformation, they couldn't clearly define the mechanics of this unique spiritual life. And everyone now follows the same standards of the old sin nature followed in the Roman Catholicism paganic worships. But they are not able to define what is the reality of the mechanics of the Christian way of life. They are not able to come out to understand what is this pre-canon period and the post-canon period of the church age. What is this? This powerful spiritual gifts which are permanently given to us. And what is the completed canon of scripture in our hands where with you and I have to take now the reality that the completed word of God has taken the place of the lack of the temporal spiritual gifts and we need to concentrate upon doctrine as never before and we need to grow up in doctrine as never demanded before and we need to be the Alekhani Ketesos since being indwelt permanently by Lord God the Holy Spirit, Lord God the Father and Lord God the Son. We need to execute a plan that could be really match the glory of Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, it is a must that we need to use rebound whenever we go in for our discourse. If it is not rebound, if it is not the confession of our sin, there is no way, Lord God, the Holy Spirit can control you. When, Lord God, the Holy Spirit doesn't control you, no matter how brilliant you are, how best you are, how perfect you are, how genius you are, you are not even going to get a single ounce of doctrine from the Bible. There will be no shedding of light. 
light has been absolutely nullified in your life. That will be the result. And therefore, you and I have to be very thoroughly maintaining to look and to understand, are we in the fellowship or not? Greater our failure not to be in the fellowship, greater will be our failure for the purpose why you have been kept alive on this earth. Therefore, dear brethren, use rebound in the privacy of your priesthood. Come back and learn to know the importance of these polytema privileges. We shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.